What's your message to your clients in a moment like this one, Mike? Yeah, thanks, John. Thanks for having me. Um, look, I think this is part of the story that we expected, which is we, we always expected there was going to be a second wave. It's hard to really know if what we're seeing now in some of these southern states is a second wave or really it's a first wave. But regardless, we do think there will be a, some second wave coming in the fall You know, before we get a vaccine. That's the way most of these pandemics typically behave. And, you know, our advice from a, you know, from an investment standpoint is, is that you probably need to ignore that a little bit. You have to assume that we're not going to have a national lockdown again. We may have hot spots like we're seeing now, and there'll be some, you know, retracting of reopening, maybe doing things a little bit differently, enforcing uh, the wearing of masks. I mean, one thing we definitely think will continue is social distancing, but that's very different than a lockdown from an economic standpoint. So, these are the kind of tests that markets go through. Uh, we think it's very normal, and uh, you know we're going to be buying uh, stocks into this dip. Well, Mike, worst case outcome, of course, as you point out, are lockdowns. Not people's base case right now, at least not the consensus view. Best case is we re we constrain the reopening process. In that environment, how difficult will it be to re-energize the momentum in the cyclical trade that we saw coming into June, which has now faded? Yeah, I think, I mean, that's, I mean, that's going to be probably the more important takeaway is not so much at the index level, but what can lead. And once again, you know, when you go into recession, there's always fits and starts with the recovery. There's always, you know, fear, doubt, and uncertainty about that. And in this case, it's going to be around the virus. But I would say, you know, you, at the top of the show, you mentioned, you know, my number one concern, quite frankly, for the recovery is do we get the extension on these uh, fiscal stimulus benefits, particularly the unemployment benefit uh, as well as the PPP program? And, you know, ironically, you know, the, the worse the, the virus gets and the concern around that and the markets start to trade poorly, the more pressure there's going to be actually on Congress to make sure that that actually happens. So I think they kind of work together in concert. And um, it's going to, I think the next 30 days is probably going to be more of the same. It's going to be really choppy. And we got to get through an earnings season still. There's going to be mixed news there. We're going to continue to have some bad news on, you know, the virus. Uh, and that's going to persist into the fall. And, you know, that's what markets do. They climb a wall of worry. So, Mike, let's talk about the next 30 days and how you suggest people should be positioned going into a critical 30 days for the next policy move down in Washington. Yeah, so I think uh, the correction that we're in right now really began back in early June. I think June 8th was the high for the S&P 500. You know, some stocks have made new highs since then, particularly the NASDAQ, which is really a kind of a defensive positioning, right? That's a work-from-home winner. Uh, and, and so when, you know, when NASDAQ or the tech stocks are doing better, that's the market's way of saying I'm actually worried about some of these things that we were just talking about. And, and I think, once again, that's going to, that kind of environment may persist into uh, July. Uh, but I do think that when you get into earnings season, what we're going to find out, John, is that people probably cut the numbers a little bit too much. So as you know, the economic surprise factor is, has reached the highest level we've ever seen in the last couple of weeks. What does that mean? It means that you know, the economists took their numbers down too far, and the second quarter is probably going to be better than what we originally were thinking back in April and May. Well, I would, I would suggest strongly that that's probably the same thing we're going to get for earnings, too, that maybe analysts cut their numbers or companies guided down too much in April, and we're going to be surprised on the upside. But we've got to get there, right? We've got to get through the you know, next couple of weeks, and then we'll get confirmation of that. So that's going to be the opportunity. And so the opportunity for us is let's let the market kind of come to us. Let's have this little correction that we're going through. We think it could go down all the way to 2800 2850 in the worst case. And what we want to be doing into that unequivocally is buying more cyclicality in the portfolio, things that basically can benefit from the recovery continuing. That would be things like banks and consumer cyclicals, material stocks, maybe even energy and industrials. That's, those are the things that tend to do best. And by the way, just to be clear, those groups have led since March 23rd. So it doesn't get a lot of press, but we, we, the markets have been rotating more cyclically already and towards the uh, smaller cap stocks. What's your stop, Mike? What's the one thing that would jump out and say, I've changed my mind, the data's changed, the world has changed, this isn't the right view anymore? Well, we already talked about it, but I'll give you two, two other ones. But, I mean, the first one is, if, if this bill does not get passed in July, okay, it, as far as I'm, I can tell, you know, the recovery is going to be at great risk. So we will change our mind quickly if it looks like that's not going to happen. Our base case is that it will pass. 
we will get extension on the PPP and the unemployment benefits. The other thing I would say is that um, let's say we reopen and then we don't see a, a re-engagement in the economy the way that we have so far. In other words, as states have reopened, we have seen consumers get back to it. Um, and that's our general base case assumption. If, for whatever reason, we start to see that behavior change, meaning we don't see folks re-engage in the economy, that maybe people do remain extremely conservative in their behavior, that would change my mind, too. It's not human nature to be that way, but it's possible. And that would be something that would clearly change my mind. And the last thing would be if capital markets start to shut down and we don't, you know, companies don't have access to credit or, or equity markets to raise capital and that were to break down, that would be a big change. But you know, we don't see that happening either.